Moon Dial by Helen Creswell, dramatized for radio from her own novel. It is midnight in that most dark and secret place. If you should chance, and why should you, to be walking there, you would be blindfolded by the night. You would smell the ancient, musty scent of the yews that line the path, and the curious green odour of dew on grass. You put out a hand. It gropes to find the unforgiving touch of stone. The shock of it brings an uprush of fear so strong that you can almost taste it. You stand motionless, with all five senses sharp, alert as a fox. But if by some chance you should possess another, a sixth sense, what then? First, a tingle of the spine, a sudden chill, a shudder. You are looking up at a statue. A huge stone man seems locked in a struggle with another, smaller figure, that of a boy. The presence you feel is all about you now. And with the lifting of the hairs on the back of your neck, you are certain, certain that you are being watched. You turn slowly, half dreading what you might see. But the path is empty. Your gaze moves to the great moon-washed face of the house itself. The scene fades, and you realize that the moon is going behind the clouds. And then you run. And as you run through the disappearing garden, you feel that a mighty wind is blowing, and voices are clamoring in that empty place. What you also hear, and what you will remember ever afterwards with a shudder, even in the full light of day, is the lonely sobbing of a child. Hi, diary. Sorry, haven't talked to you for a couple of days. End of term and all that. <laughs> Quite missed you, actually. I know you were mum's idea. Said I could tell you all my true feelings. And I have. Uh, and up to now, it's mostly been about dad dying and mum having to work full time. <laughs> but now I'm going to have another whinge. You won't believe it. She's sending me to Aunt Mary's at Belton. <laughs> and she's about a hundred years old. Just posting me off like a parcel or something. For the whole holidays. Papa. Coming! Belton House is one of those National Trust houses. Aunt Mary works there some days, but it's bang in the middle of nowhere. So what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I warn you, I might go mad. You'll get lonely, Mum. You know you will. I shan't have time. And of course, there's always Mr. Benson. I do wish you'd call him John. Not as if he's related or anything. I'll get lonely. I'll pop out and see you whenever I can. Never thought I'd ever wish the summer holes were shorter. Oh, <laughs> come on, Minty. Going to email me every day, are you? Fat chance. This isn't easy for me either, love. No, sorry. I've never stopped there before. Only gone to tea. I stayed with her when I was little, and I always... Hmm, it's so long ago now, but I do remember having a feeling... It sounds daft, I know. A feeling that there was something going on. You know, happening. More to it than met the eye. Ghosts, you mean? Haunted? That kind of thing, but, well, more real somehow. I don't know, I never actually saw anything. If she hasn't grown another three inches... <laughs> she is shooting up. Five centimetres, actually. Nice to have someone to cook for. Oh, you'll find she's ever such a good little eater. Not a bit fussy, eat anything. <laughs> Except fried worms and deadly nightshade. I am here, you know. I put her in the same room as you used to have, Kate. Oh, she'll like that. Come on, Minty. I'll take you up and get you unpacked. It's the door facing you at the top. Oh, do tell her to take care with the bedspread, Kate. It's my memory patchwork. <laughs> I'll be dead careful, honest. I won't put my muddy wellies on it or spill my nail varnish. I'd forgotten you could get to the gardens from the churchyard. It's lovely and cool here. She stopped and began to move among the tombstones, reading them. Then Minty, going on ahead, had her first sign that she was stepping on the edge of a mystery. <sighs> a little icy gust blew about her. She shivered under the hot July sun. 
Looking up at the church tower, she saw tiny gilt pennants glinting and quivering. In the wind, they'd spin, like weathercocks. But they did not spin. They stood motionless while Minty stood and gazed, her skin brushed with ice. She took a few testing steps forward, and the coldness came with her. Another step, another. All at once, the air was warm again and quiet. This is weird. Really weird. She turned and retraced her steps and was instantly back in that inexplicable pocket of cold. And she knew with her sixth sense that the little icy whirlpool was only a message. The real mystery lay beyond. You'll be all right, won't you? Of course. You're a goose. Oh, Minty, I will miss you. Think how tidy the toothpaste tube will be. You'd think it was forever. Bye bye, love. See you at the weekend. Be good. Bye, Mum. Bye. She'll cry with me not there. I know she will. She's cried lots since Dad died. At night. She thinks I don't hear her. I'll tell you what, Diary. It mightn't be as bad here as I thought. There is something going on. Happening. Just like Mum said. Just by the corner of the church, there's this cold wind. Really cold. Icy. It was just after five o'clock when the nightmare began. I made you a jelly. Super. Children like jellies. Oh, yeah? Do you mean like grown-ups like spinach? Oh, oh, you get started, dear. She's done this proper tea. Like a party. Where are the crackers? Doesn't she know people don't have tea time anymore? Tick-tock goes the clock. Hmm. Oh, Minty, dear. Is something that... I I've never in my life... What? It's, what? It it's Kate. It's your mother. There, there's been an accident. No. Oh, no. 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 She's no. in intensive no. care. No. Oh, Mum. Mum, don't leave me. Please. 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 I'm so sorry, Minty. That was someone called John. Mr. Benson from your mother's office. He's going along to the hospital now. I want to go. Can I go? Oh, best not for the moment, he says. She still having tests and that. Head injuries, he says. Why can he go and not me? Oh, I want to. Tomorrow, to. maybe. I'm going out. Oh, oh, where? Anywhere. Oh, not on your own. If Mum was here, she'd let me. I want you to go through the world fearless, Minty. Go over to the lodge. See if World is there. Nice he is. Likes children. World? Well, Mr. World to you, I suppose. Hello there. Not one been left behind, are you? I'm, I'm stopping over the road with Aunt Mary. Oh, yes. Heard about you. So what's your name then? Minty. Minty Kane. Come to meet the children, I dare say. Children? What children? Oh, uh, that'll be for you to find out. You mean there are children living at the house? No, no, I never said anything about living. You mean ghosts? I never said that either. But the minute I clapped eyes on you, I knew that's the one I thought. That's the one to turn the key. The key? To set them free. Those children, the ones I've known about, oh, 70 year or more. Only in Snatch's mind, only glimpses and voices crying. Crying? And they're locked up and crying and begging to be set free. I can hear their voices on the wind and sense them in the shadows, and I fear ache sometimes because they're there begging me. And I haven't got. But now you've come. And she's in intensive care. 
don't think I can bear it. Aunt Mary keeps pretending it's all right, but it's not. Sometimes people go into comas and never come out. Oh, talk to you later, diary. Is that the hospital? Oh, there you are, dear. Did you sleep well? What did they say? Well, she's still in intensive care, unconscious, but... Uh, Comfortable. Can I go and see her? This afternoon. That Mr. Benson will fetch us in his car. Now, come along and sit down and have some breakfast. I'm not hungry. I'm going out. Where? To see world. Well, it's too early. House doesn't open till ten. World was not there, but Minty kept on and entered the courtyard and saw in one corner a door slightly ajar and a short stone passage. The garden. It lay quiet and faultless under the early sun. Minty stepped out onto the terrace and felt a thrill of recognition. She had never been here before, and yet had a strange knowledge that she was now stepping exactly where she was meant to step. This garden had been waiting for her. Slowly she walked along the terrace. She paused to look up at the statues, as if expecting a sign on their stone faces. But they gave none. One, now two, she went down the side three, steps to the three, path that led to the five, very heart of the six, garden. Seven. She had a curious sense of being drawn, of having no choice. As she went, she was taking steps that had already been measured for her. She lifted her eyes and saw ahead, at the crossroads of the garden, another statue, and felt a prickling of her shoulder blades. There was a power in the air, so strong that she could hardly breathe. Minty stopped in front of the statue, with icy tides washing over her from head to foot. There was an old man and a young boy, both winged like angels, though she was certain they were not. They seemed to be wrestling, struggling for possession of a bowl above their heads. And catching a glimpse of a metal beak, Minty suddenly realized what it was. A sundial. A moon dial. I'm still in exactly the same place. But it's so cold. The sun was shining. Those yews, they've shrunk. There's... there's lots of smoke coming from the chimneys. I'm out of here. Oh, sorry. Oh, my aunt. Oh, my. Are you okay? Oh, oh. I ain't never seen one that took before. Who are you? Seen ghosts before, you know. Well, bits of bobs of things, anyhow. But in daylight and as plain as the nose on your face. Hey, what do you mean, ghost? You're the ghost. <coughs> oh, yeah, I'm a ghost, all right. That's why Ma Crump just told me to run out and get the raspberries for the pie. Run here, run there. I wish I was a blessed ghost, and that's a fact. <coughs> Who's Queen now? Elizabeth, of course. Victoria? You're a bit of a letdown for a ghost. I must be out of my head standing here rattling to you. Best be off if I don't want to whack him. No, wait. I've got an idea. What? Let's... let's shake hands. Why? Don't you see? Whichever of us is a ghost won't be able to. Not properly. Ghosts go through things. They're not solid. Ugh. My hand goes straight through yours. Ugh. No, thanks. It won't. It'll be the other way round. You're a girl, aren't you? Dressed in boys' clothes. Blessed if I'll be beat by a girl. Here, then. We're both real. What's your name? <laughs> Tom. Short for Edward. <laughs> uh, I'm Minty. Short for Penelope. You were downstairs. What are you? Laundry? Scullery? What are you? All sorts. I'm up from the London ass. Footman's what I'm after. Footman? I ain't big enough yet, but I shall be. Country air. I was six foot before a pinch nose. <coughs> <coughs> I suppose it might work the other way round. I used to hold my breath to stop myself growing. Stop yourself? Oh, you're a girl. Forgot. You'd never be a footman if you go to seven foot, let alone six. How old are you? Twelve or bats, I suppose. Don't you know? Near enough, I do. You've only got to ask your mother. Dead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a pa. Orphan. 
and awful. Got a sister though. Miss her, I do. Dory. Funny nugget she is, makes me laugh. How old's she? Seven or eight of bats. Tried to keep her with me, I did. But they said she was too little. Once I'm six foot and a footman, I'll have her ear right enough. Here, you, watch your name. Go on. Um, I'm coming now, sir. Right away, sir. You come here. Come on. New no, from London, ain't you? Yes, sir. Ain't heard of dawn in London, I dare say, or birds. Birds get up at dawn, what's your name? Birds go peck, uh, peck, uh, peck, uh, peck. Uh, oh, don't. Oh, don't. Peck. It's my fault. Boys mate. from London wants learning what's what. Oh, stop it, please, please. Uh. Come on, Minty. I hate the smell of hospitals. Oh, Mum, I'm scared. Fear isn't a real feeling, Minty. Lots of things are bigger than fear and can beat it. Love for a start. Love for a start. Love for a start. Let her eyes be open and see me. Right, Minty. In you go. And remember, she'll probably know you're there even if she doesn't seem to. Somewhere deep down. You can talk to her. In fact, it's good if you do. What's your name? Minty. Oh, how pretty. Don't be frightened, Minty. Talk to her if you want to. Her name's Kate, not her. Of course. I th think I want to go now. Well, please don't. I know it looks terrible with all those wires. Y it's not that. Just say hello. Just say a few words. Hello, Kate. Mum. It's no good. Mm. I can't. Well, now. That's a white little face. It's your mother, isn't it? I've been hearing. Right sorry I am. You keep going to where those children are. You need them now, I reckon, as much as they need you. I know. That's where I'm going. Ah. It's me, Tom, short for Edward. I'm here. Tom? Tom? Sundial. Moondial. Night. Now what? and join your playfellows in the streets. Who is it? Who's there? Don't be scared. It's only me. Are you... Are you from the village? Yes. I'm Araminta Kane. Haven't you heard what they say? What's the matter? Don't be frightened. I'm not a ghost. I'm... Sarah! <gasps> Sarah! Please, please. I'm sorry. I'm there. sorry. See what you've done, Sarah? You've frightened the moon away. The moon had gone in, and with the new dark began a new journey in time. Minty stood perfectly still as she felt the shift, the wheeling of day and night, seasons and weathers. Dandelion, what's the time of day? <sighs> Tom! Ah, that fetched her right enough. No, it would. <sighs> Four o'clock. <coughs> it's seven at least. <coughs> I've tried to get you back for days. What do you mean? It was only this morning that we met. Oh, Lummy. It was. Days back. I should know. I'm the one who lives here. You're the ghost. Don't say that. Ouch! Not a ghost. Say it. Go on. Well, maybe not to me, but, but old Mags never saw you the other day. That gardener, you mean? Gave me a proper walloping. I saw him. Horrible man. But listen, I touched him. I could feel his leather jerkin. I felt it. And then... Then what? He vanished. 
And you. There you are, then. Why do you want to see me again? Someone to talk to, I suppose. Tell you, Dory stopped on in London. Have you heard any news about Dory? Bit. Coachman gave me a message. Stopping with old mother Barker. Know what that means. What? Bits of crust, that's what. And that's if she's lucky. Got her picking night and day. She's only little. Here, grown any taller, have I? Not really. Not so you'd notice. <coughs> I, I think you might have grown a bit, now I look at you. <coughs> you ain't my only ghost, you know. You've got another. More of a real ghost than you. Always at night when I see her. Little than you. And dress like a proper girl with long skirts. What's she look like? What's her name? I ain't seen her face, not proper. Got this long cloak and a big hood. Seems scared when she sees me, as if I was the ghost. Know what her name is, though? Sarah. <gasps> Sarah! Time, it seemed, was a web, and all three caught in it. Herself, Tom, Sarah. What's up? I've seen her too. Just now. Just before I came here. What? In broad day? Plain as I see you? No, it was night, like you said. But not my night. Her night. Oh, I don't know. You don't? Nor you. You don't either. Here! You! Sim! Max! Don't go! Tom! Tom, hold on! Go away till the coast's clear. I ain't letting the garden unless I'm sent. I won't half catch it if she finds out. She? Who? Mrs. Crump. Let's make a dash for it. You coming? Do not see you. Not a daylight ghost. Tell you what, let's find out. Find out what? If they can see you. You come along with me now. To the kitchen. There you are. Right. You're spanky, I'll say that. Remind me of our Dory a bit. Here, you let go that dripping pan you're saving, miss. You know who's dripping that is. Please, Mrs Crump, I was only... Don't you give me any of your onlys, miss. I... You get on and scour them pans, you hear? Because I'll scour you. No one's noticed me. I must be invisible. Here! You, boy! Ah! You! Oh, what's your name? Uh, what was that wink? Please, Mum! Nothing, Mama! Wink, ah. wink, wink! Ah. I ain't having winking in my kitchen, do you hear? Oh, At this rate, you soon won't hear anything. Not with that ear, anyhow. You oh, ain't here to wink, what's your name? Ah. You ain't paid 15 Sorry. shillings a year to wink. You come along of me, and I'll put you where you can wink yourself blind. You stop there and wink, what's your name? And get some of them bottles dusted and tidied while you're about it. There. Now what we're going to do? Tom, oh, I want to go home. She welcomed the present moment now, almost stroked the warm grass in her thankfulness. She gazed at the stone sundial, moon dial. Even now she felt its pull, its power. She gazed at the two winged figures, the man and the boy. Who were they, bearing the sundial, moon dial, as seasons turned, years wheeled, centuries rolled? Their stone limbs were pitted by time and weather, and yet they seemed immutable, could stand till doomsday. Minty put out a hand and half fearfully touched the head of the winged boy. I'm on your side. Listen, Mum, you were right. Belton is a happening kind of place. All kinds of things are happening to me. I'm going to tell you a story, and it's the story of what's happening to me. I don't even know what the end will be. It's lucky you're like this, else I wouldn't be telling you at all. First instalment tomorrow. Bye for now, Mother Goose. Is the doctor here? Could I ask him something? I think so. If you go to the desk and ask, I have to stay here. Tapes. Absolutely marvellous idea. You've got to swear that you will never, ever listen. Do you? I swear. Cross my heart and hope to die. And you've got to make the nurses swear as well. 
Especially that one with the ginger hair. If you don't, I shan't do it. I'll make them. If they don't, I shall kick them out. It sounds like a very special story you've got to tell, Minty. Oh, it is. The sort you'd never tell, usually. And your mother's a very lucky lady. And she'll hear that story, Minty, never you fear. She's a long, long way away at the moment, resting somewhere, but she's there. And the one voice in the world she wants to hear is yours. I've never had such an exciting morning. I've had a visitor. Oh! Ever such an interesting person, a Miss Raven. Doing some research for a book she's writing. About ghosts, of all things. Ghosts? And are there any? Oh, you know how these tales spring up about old places. There are stories about the Queen's bedroom. And some tale about a, a giant footman who worked here years ago. Not Tom. But bless me, I haven't told you the most exciting news of all. What? She's going to stop here with us. We're going to have a lodger. Ooh, someone walking over my grave. Or theirs. Has there been a woman here, asking things? You'll be meaning the one who calls herself Raven. I told her nothing. She was a woman I wouldn't tell the time of day to. Not with the cold eyes of her and the thin lips. I told her nothing. But she's coming to stay. She's stopping with my Aunt Mary. It'll be the children she's after. And it'll be for you to save them. But how? How can I? I would, if I knew how to. It's as I told you, there's only you as the key. Have you found them yet? Yes. Well, one of them. And perhaps two. But I still don't really know. I'll save them. I will. She left World and went through the courtyard and into the gardens, till she reached the moon dial. She stood looking up at it and addressed it silently. Then a thought came to her so clearly that it was as if a voice spoke. What happens to time when the moon shines on a sundial? With the question came a cold, distinct draught of air. She had been posed a riddle. Thank you. And she walked on, while her mind reeled with the enormity of the question. Moondial, measuring a different time. Moondial, free from the slow, relentless march of the sun, the trickle of sand in the glass, the minute-by-minute -minute ticking of clocks. Moondial, freewheeling, measuring the real time of hearts and lives, and linking them across centuries. Moon time. She found herself at the foot of the church tower. Goose flesh rose on her bare arms. It was still there, that mysterious icy pocket. Tom! I know. Just as if someone's just walked over my grave. You! But I never realised you could use the moon dial. Ah, Miss Clever. Thought you was the only one who knew about the moon dial, didn't you? You mean... Queer though, ain't it, getting here? Like going through a sort of tunnel and a big strong wind blowing. Tom, listen, I've got to warn you. There's someone after you. They won't come looking here. Not my cramp, nor Magda or nobody. All fast asleep, they are. And I woke up there a minute ago. No, it's not Mags, I mean. It's a woman from my time. Oh, look! Ladies with legs! Oh, my. Wait till I tell her how it is. She'll never believe me. Tom, come oh, back! Dear. Are you all right? Fine. Fine, thanks. It's so peaceful here. The church looks interesting. <laughs> Tom! Tom! Come on back! But he had gone. He had spun back through that whirlpool of wind and voices and was back in his own time. In the dark, all on his own. Poor Tom. She was still standing in the little icy patch by the tower. She noticed a tiny stone, a mere thumbnail of a stone. It said quite simply, E.L. 1871. It was so small that it must surely be for a child. But if so, why did it not say that it was the dearly beloved son or daughter of anybody? or suffer the little children to come unto me. It looked so bleak 
so unloved. Minty, is that you? I'm back. Come and give me a hand, will you? Help me move this chest, dear. Then I'll have room to put that little table from the top of the stairs. What for? Because she's writing a book, remember? You can't sit writing at a chest. You want something you can put your feet under. That's it. Do you think she liked that picture? I fetched it out of the cupboard specially. Lovely. The moon tile. What does she guess is? It's a bit old looking. Tatty. Oh, that won't matter. She likes old things. There's the old photos in my room. She could have those. And I'd have that instead. I wouldn't mind. Oh, I've already shown her those. She's been in my room. She was very interested in them. Though I do wish you'd keep your bedroom a little tidier, Minty. Sorry, I didn't realise it was open to visitors. That, Minty, was not an overly polite thing to say. But I shall make allowances under the circumstances. Dear Mum, this is me, Minty, and I'm going to tell you a story. It's a true story of what's happening to me here at Belton, and it's absolutely secret. And so she began to tell her story, starting at the beginning, with the strange words that World had said to her when they first met. And as she did so, the story shaped itself in her mind. She seemed to relive it, and time stood still. And that's all for now. You'll have to wait for the next instalment. Who is the mysterious hooded child? And why is she seen only at night? And who is the sinister Miss Raven, the Ghostbuster? And I've been thinking. Moon time. That's where I think you are at the moment. Somewhere in my moon time. Bye, Mother Goose. For now. What happens to time when the moon shines on a sundial? Where did you say this Miss Raven came from? She didn't say. I had the impression she travelled about a good deal, here, there, and everywhere, she said. This is delicious trifle. Oh. <laughs> Do you lock up the house at night? What a question. As if I would. I thought you probably did. Just thought I'd make sure. You've no need to worry your head about that, dear. I lock the doors back and front every night, and then I take the keys out and hide them in a safe place. You have to do that, because otherwise a burglar could come in through a window, then unlock the door from the inside, and take away every stick of furniture in the house. Good thinking. So I put the keys every night in the tea caddy. Brilliant. Thanks. Ugh. <sighs> Minty closed the door softly behind her. The moon, almost full, hung huge and motionless in the sky. All about it lay faint stardust, light years away. The familiar walk down the path and along the road to the church gate seemed like a journey to a foreign land under that unaccustomed sky. The tall stones, crosses, praying angels lay washed in a calm and pallid light. They looked oddly self-contained and formal, less higgledy-piggledy now than under the sun. They seemed more certainly to spell death. Ah! Puss! Puss! At night, cats come into a mysterious kingdom of their own. The proud king cat with shuttered eye walks in his own and private light. She glimpsed a large ginger, moon-bleached, then a shabby grey. Do they come here every night? Are they real? Could she have stumbled on the ancient mystery of the cat? Could it be that the cat exists not by the death-dealing rule of the clock, but by moon time? What happens to time when the moon shines on a sundial? Then for the first time she saw the strange ill-matched pair of wrestling figures by moonlight. It feathered their wings and tipped the curls of the cherubic boy. He seemed, 
despite his blind eyes, to be smiling. Silver suits him. Then, reluctantly, she looked up at the man and noted fearfully that his hair and beard were silvered, but that his eyes were black holes. Who are you? Still night. Now Minty saw the others. They moved out of the shadows from all directions. The child, oblivious, came on singing, almost level with the yew where Minty was hidden. She's coming. Look out. Hide. <laughs> she stood helplessly as the small figure trailed past, face hidden by the curving folds of the hood. She saw another figure, that of a child creep across the path to cut off retreat, and her hand flew up to stifle a scream. The figure had no face. It was wearing a loose sack over its head, hanging down to the waist. There were two gaping eyes in it, like those in a skull. Others, one by one, stole from the shadows, all shrouded and closed in with slow menace. Now their quarry had reached the moon dial and was looking up at it just as Minty herself had done only moments earlier. Who are you? Secret you are, seem it to me. Perhaps because I only see you at night. Time is it, Miss? Oh, surely she hears them. I know you're really a sundown, but not to me. I've got a clock to tell the daytime. Tick tock, tick tock. To me, you're not a sundial. You're a moon dial. Devil's child. Devil's child. Devil's child, devil's child, we're the devil's daughter. She's got the eye, the evil eye. No, I'm not. I haven't. Oh, please, please. My ma said so. She's seen her. She's got the devil's mouth. Look at her, hiding it. Frit will see it. Devil's child, devil's child, devil's child. No, no. It's all right. You're safe with me. Who is it? What's that? A ghost? Yes, a ghost. I am the ghost of Araminta Cain, queen of the vampires. I'll bite your necks and suck your blood. Sarah? Sarah, where are you? Here. And what was that commotion? Sarah, do you hear me? Yes, Miss Fall. Wicked child. What have I told you? Don't! Please don't! Stop! Devil's child! That's what you are. Devil's child! Back where you belong. Stop! Stop! It was like some really scary film. They were wearing sacks over their heads. Oh, Mum, it was horrible. And why does that little girl always play on her own? At night? Devil's child... That's what they called her. And that terrible woman. They said she had the devil's mark. She must be one of the children worlds told me about. Crying to be set free. And I think Tom's the other. And so she went back in the early morning. And when she reached the moon dial, she gazed at the stone wrestlers and again thought how unequal the struggle was. How vainly the small boy fought. On impulse, she put out a hand and touched him lightly on his stone curls. I'm on your side. It was as if she had found a secret touchstone to make time itself dissolve. She went floating into a strange, slow dance of the seasons in which she felt, rather than saw, light wheeling in huge arcs, she herself at their center. In rapid succession, she smelt wood smoke, glimpsed snowdrops, felt rain slanting on her cheeks, heard a cuckoo call, and beyond there were voices whispering, pleading, crying. Autumn. Smoke. Wood smoke. A bonfire. What are they doing? Now the cloak, it's the spit of her. Give us the cloak, Sam. Now the effigy stood fully cloaked and hooded. The effect was uncanny. It could have been Sarah herself. Calitra 
right over her like she does. Oh, no! That's it. That's her. Got ya! Got ya! Got ya! There! Oh no, no! And now burn her! Burn her! Burn her! Ready! Steady! <gasps> Hooray! Hooray! Devil's trial! Devil's no! trial! No! No! <coughs> Tom! Sarah's time this is! <coughs> Not his! Take a deep breath in! Let it go out! <coughs> Tom! Oh, you again. Tom, what are you doing here? Thought you was never coming. Where have you been? How's Dory? Poorly, ain't she? Coughing like me. What do you expect, gutter picking? Why do you think I'm out here freezing? Hey, have I grown? Have I? Definitely. A lot. I know I had. <coughs> <coughs> Tom, you're frozen. Come with me. You must get warm. <sighs> warm? Where? Come on, the moon dial. It ain't working. I already tried. <coughs> it will work for me. Help us, please. Oh, looks. Tis warm. Hey, how'd you do it? Sometimes I've tried and nothing happens. I know. I think it's him. What? The little one? Yeah. But why? He ain't even winning. Look at the size of him against the big fella. Bet he'd be a footman if he stood up straight. Bet he's seven foot. <coughs> it was the boy. I know it was. This is your time? Yeah. Think I'll stay. In fact, if I could fetch our dory here, I would for sure. That's a funny thing. What? You know that kind of tunnel you go through? With a wind blowing. Them voices. Could have sworn I heard her. Dory! Call him a name she was. Yeah, what well, she's here? She could be. She'd be hiding, sure enough, little monkey. Dory! Dory! Come on, let's find her. Wait! No, Tom! Tom, wait! Mary! Mary, if she's here! Oh, no. There you are, Minty. Come along, dear. I want you. What? Oh, what luck seeing you like that. I want you to come along back home with me, dear. Oh, now, must I? I was just... That nice Mr. Benson rang, and he's going to call by to pick up something to take to your mother. He said you'd know what he meant. Yes. Oh, yes. He, he said he'd be along in about an hour. Time for me to tell Mum the second instalment. And the worst of it is, I don't know what's happened to him. Whether he's still there, or he got back to his own time. But, oh, Mum, he was freezing... And you should hear him cough. And he's so lonely. And they're so cruel, that Ma Crump and Mags. And then there's his little sister, Dory. And he says she's ill now and coughing just like him. <sighs> Got to go. And I'll come in and see you tomorrow. And I want to see your eyes open. Are you listening? Lots of love. Hello, Minty. Got something for me? You'll make sure no one else listens, won't you? Don't worry, I will. Some flowers would have been nice. Not when she's got her eyes shut. Flowers will be fine when she's a bit better. Is she getting better? Of course she is. It's just that it's happening in a way you can't really see. Invisibly. She's getting better invisibly. That's a funny word to use. Everything important's happening invisibly. She is getting better, isn't she? You're not just saying it. Don't worry, Minty. She's coming back to us slowly. And this will probably start showing on those screens the minute she hears it. Minty watched as he drove off towards the hospital and Kate. She could feel the tears trapped painfully behind her eyes. And as she went along the path by the church was already half blinded. She passed through the stream of icy air by the tower and dropped to the ground by a large sun-warmed headstone. There she cried. Partly for Tom, who was an orphan, and Sarah, whose playground was the night. But most of all, for herself, without her mother. Oh, come on, Puss. Puss, Puss, Puss. Oh, well, you don't half stare. Wouldn't be surprised if you were a scratcher and biter. 
I'm off. It's all yours. Hello. Here she is. Come along, Minty, and meet our guest. This is Miss Raven. Ooh. Someone walking on my grave. And now, what about the ghosts? Oh, well, as to that, I, I'm afraid I can't help, as I told you. I shall go over there myself. I have a nose for ghosts. Well, of course, if it's your job. And what about you, Araminta? Perhaps you have seen something. Oh, she's not been here five minutes. <laughs> Children have to be watched. I often think of them as spies. She hasn't even been in the house yet. Runs round the garden all day. Ah, the garden. Then later, Araminta, you must show me the garden. I know. The orangery. Shall we go there? Along the terrace, I think. You seem a very... Powers tell me that now, at this very moment, there is some kind of presence. Where? I can't see anything. I didn't say see. Very strong. Ah, a sundial. Is it? I had noticed. What do the figures represent, I wonder? Please, please, please. Come, let us move on. Perhaps I am mistaken. One does not really expect a sundial to be haunted. The graveyard. One can often gain very strong impressions in these places. The cold air. Can she feel the cold air? Oh, look. What a beauty. Puss. Puss, puss. Witches have cats. Oh, she's horrible. She wants to catch Tom and Sarah. I know she does. Trap them in time. But I'll stop her. That's why I'm here. I have the key. World said so. I must warn Tom. I'll go tomorrow. First thing. It's me again, Moondial. Araminta Kane. I know you can't tell me your name. You're just a statue. But I know you've got one. And I'm going to find out what it is. But now... Now, you know what I want, don't you? Dawn. Still dawn. But I wanted... Minnie, quick, here. Tom, what's up? Mag's about. Not him. Not even born yet, like us not. What? Shh. Listen. I came to fetch you. I want us both to go to her together. Sarah. We're already there. Listen. She's here. In your time. No. We're there. In her time. Uh, but it's daytime. You said yourself. She only ever comes out at night. Well, we ain't both dreaming. At last. We'll see her. Over there by the lily ponds. Come on. Her hood's down. Daisy. Daisy. That's what it says in the book. You close at night and open in the day. You and me are opposites, Daisy. I curl up in the day and come out at night. When it's safe. When they can't perceive me. So why she... Shh. You're my midsummer's wish, Daisy. To see you open up in the sun. Midsummer day? No. I must never look. Never. But what if I shut my eyes and then wash my face in the water? What if it'd be a kind of spell for Midsummer's Day? Now let the sun dry it. Oh, please let it work. Please. Shall we? No. Wait. Feels the same. Oh, but what if it isn't? But how can I tell? I daren't look down at my reflection. I daren't. Sarah! Sarah! The child whirled round. Her hand flew up to her face but not before Minty had glimpsed the dark purple stain of a birthmark spreading over one cheek. Now she understood. Sarah, stop! Please! After her! No! No, she thinks we're like those others. She'll think we're after her. 
We are, aren't we? No. I mean, really after her. Did you see? Her face. That mark. Quick. She can't see us now. We'll catch her up. Keep behind the bushes. She, she's going back in. Come on. In the house. I ain't letting here. Just give me a life if they catch me in here. They can't. It's her time, remember? Oh, Miss Sarah. The sex preserver. Sex preserve me. The devil's mark. The evil eye. It didn't work. Who are you? We want to help you. We're friends. I haven't got any. I ain't got any neither. Except in her. Got a sister, but she ain't here. Dory. Ain't she is? That what you are? Aren't you afraid of me? Of course not. The others are. They call me the devil's daughter. I know what they call you, and you're not. But I've got the devil's mark. Sarah! Here, Miss Bowl, I'm coming. Little devil. How dare you? What have I told you? Wicked child. What have I told you? <laughs> no! Don't! Please don't! I did it! Pig! Pig, leave her alone! Wicked girl, go on. We're going up. There's an kitchen boy I am. We're invisible, Tom. We must. What if it was your sister in there? She's only eight. Same story. As soon as the doors open, slip in after me, and I'll close it. I don't suppose, Sarah, you ever <gasps> consider what my own Raven. life is like. Who's she? Shut up here, week in, week out, with a monstrosity. <laughs> they don't pay me very much, you know. I shall never be rich waiting after you. And no one speaks to me unless they can help it. Do you know why, Sarah? Because they are afraid of me. Because they believe that something evil must rub off on me being with you day in, day out. They may be right. Perhaps it does. Who knows? I sometimes wonder whether I exist at all. I sometimes wonder whether I shall go mad. Shut in here. Why do you never look at me? Look at me! Don't turn round. Wear the glass. I am still here. At least the mirror tells me that. Augusta Vole, 37 years old, penniless, a servant, but... I am a beautiful woman. Such a beautiful white skin. Do you not think me beautiful, Sarah? Do you? Answer me, do you? Yes. Oh, yes. And beautiful faces need mirrors, Sarah. So today, I shall spend it with my own reflection. Better bury your head, dear. The mirrors are coming out to play. There. What a difference it makes to the room. I feel better already. I wish you could see it. But you can't, of course, poor Sarah. <laughs> if you ever look into a mirror, we know what will happen, don't we? What would happen first? I don't hear you. Louder, please, again. What would happen first? The glass would crack. <laughs> That's better. Yes, the glass would crack. And then? And then, Sarah? Oh, no. Please. Tell me. The devil would the devil would get you not the devil tom oh no who is it who's there her turn to be scared <coughs> tom wait <coughs> tom <coughs> why did you run we should have stopped <coughs> helped her there's an you heard what she said the devil <coughs> but surely <coughs> don't believe that minty stared at him aghast Surely he did not believe that Sarah, with her sweet, marked face, was really the devil's child? As she stared, she saw a thin, scarlet line running from the corner of his mouth. Oh, Tom. <coughs> that does it. I'm finished with her. And you. I ain't playing this devil's game no more. <coughs> I'm going to be six foot tall on a footman. I'm going to fetch our... Tom, please. Oh, Tom, no. He had gone deliberately left her alone in this alien time. It was useless to call him. He could never come against his will. And so she herself fled back to the moon dial, 
and as she went, was pursued by spiteful, chattering voices. Better bury your head, dear. The mirrors are coming out to play. No! No! If you ever look into a mirror, we know what will happen, don't we? The devil will get you. The devil will get you. Devil's child. Where the evil eye. Dead. 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 Oh, Moondial, I want to go home. Please. So there you are. Sorry. I lost count of the time. I'm not talking about late, Minty. I don't expect to come down in the morning and find my front door open. But I closed it. I know I did. Unlocked. You can imagine what a shock. And then when I found you gone... You might have been out all night. You weren't, I suppose. Of course not. I just got up early, that's all. And fetched your aunt's key from its hiding place. That was a sly trick. I won't have it, Minty. I'm sorry, Aunt Mary. I didn't think. That, of course, is the trouble with children. They don't think. Next time, I'll lock the door behind me. Oh, no. Your aunt will put the key somewhere else. Somewhere safe. I'm responsible for you, Minty. I can't have you running off on your own all hours of the day. And night. Uh, and night. I may have to go out at night myself, Mrs. Bower, for my work. That, of course, is... Quite a different matter. Oh, quite a different matter, Miss Raven. Oh, Mum, it was horrible. She was so cruel. Poor little Sarah. Just think, shut up in that room all day, every day, with that horrible woman, and no one to talk to her. They think the birthmark is the devil's mark, and so does she. She believes it. And Tom. Even he believes it. Well, half, anyway. And oh, Mum, he spat blood. Poor Tom. And he's all on his own, too. And being beaten by that ghastly cook and Mags. He's got this dream of growing six foot tall and being a footman. And bringing Dory up from London. But alone... We're all alone. Sarah, Tom, me. Oh, don't leave me alone, Mum. Don't leave me. Sorry about that. Now, where was I? Got to have a plan. Tom won't come to me. Not now. He's frightened. So, I must go to him. Morning. Get in the sun into my old bones. <laughs> Wild? Do you mind if I call you Wild? It doesn't sound right, Mr. Wild. Uh, you call me that, it's who I am, whole world. They all call me that. Wild? <laughs> I wanted to ask you. Do you know anything about the moon, the sundial? In the garden? Yes, the one on the U path. Interested in it, are you? Yes, I want to find out who they are, the man and the boy. Tell you what I have got, a book. Had it since I was a little lad, hours I spent puzzling over it. Oh, may I see it, please? You'll learn a lot from it, I did. The queerest things. They've stuck in my mind all these years. What kind of things? Well, for instance, clock time is mean time, sundial time is what they call apparent time. And you know what the only real time is, exact time? What? Star time. Star time? You mean moon time? Moon time? Well, I hadn't heard of that one, but moon and stars are out together. You read it. Oh, I will. And thank you. And about the sundial, I'll ask one or two folk find out for you. Thank you, Wild. Those children, they're in trouble. I know. It's as if they're getting nearer, crying. It breaks my heart to hear them. I know, but not for much longer. 
I promise. You're a good one. I knew you was the minute I set eyes on you. <laughs> and you, you're a good one. <laughs> what about that mother of yours, then? Oh, she's getting better, thank you. Invisibly. And so Minty began to read the book World had given her, looking for clues. What he had told her was true. Star or sidereal time was the only exact time. And there was a whole chapter about the inscriptions that are found on sundials. For the night cometh, cutting off all power of passing of time. That's true. Perhaps it becomes moon time and nothing to do with clocks. Looks et umbra vicissim sed semper amor. Light and shadow by turns, but always love. Yes, that's it. Mum would like that. That was Mr. Benson. He says he'll come for you at two. Oh, has she woken up? Well, he said something about seeing for yourself. Oh, she must have. Oh, Aunt Mary. Now, don't go getting too excited, dear. We don't know yet. You don't want to be disappointed. Minty, say hello to her. I'll be back in a minute. Mum? Mum, it's me, Minty. Have you been listening to my story? About Tom and Sarah and the moon dial? There's lots more to tell you. I... I went again this morning and... Minty... Minty... <laughs> Oh, Mum! Mum! You've come back! Did she have much to say? No, only my name. It sounds as if there's a long way to go yet. I'll cut some roses next time you go. Ooh, that looks an interesting book you've got in your room, Minty. Didn't know my room was open to visitors. What book? The one about sundials. Oh, that. Not much good. Might I borrow it, Araminta? There's a very interesting sundial in the formal gardens, Mrs. Bower, depicting two winged figures, Eros and Kronos, I'm told. She knows their names. I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> Might as well finish it. Now I've started. She escaped as soon as she could and went to the churchyard because she wanted to hug to herself the joy that had been welling up in her since the moment when Kate had opened her eyes and whispered her name. Now she could even admit to herself the terrible dread that had been haunting her, that Kate might die and leave her as truly alone as Tom and Sarah. I'll go and sit in that icy patch. It's got to have a meaning. I might find out if I just sit and wait. And so she sat on the coarse, yellowing grass just off the path and right by the tiny thumbnail stone with its inscription E.L. And she felt the usual iciness and at the same time another kind of chill that lifted the hairs at the nape of her neck. The skin on her arms broke out into goose pimples. Someone walking over my grave. <coughs> Minty! Minty! Tom! Tom! What is it? Dory. Oh, no. She, she's spitting. Spitting? Oh, blood. Oh, Tom. Done there. Ain't no sense blabbing. Waste the water. Ah, oh, Dory don't cry. Didn't run off because I was frick, you know. I know. Got to get her out. Sarah, aren't we? And we've got to get you out. And Dory. Something to do with that old sundial, I reckon. No mags. No crump. No beatings. You may never go back, ever. Tonight. She had not known for certain till this moment, but now she was sure. It was something to do with things coming full circle, with Kate having opened her eyes again. The game was drawing to a close. They had all been caught up in it together, Kate, herself, Tom, Sarah, and now it would be resolved. 
She saw Tom, who was her friend, yet a kitchen boy from Victorian times, under the full wide light of a 21st century sun, and knew that if this moment was real, all things were possible. She studied him, noting detail, the grime of his smudged face, the shock of unkempt hair, the missing buttons, even the holes in his clumsy boots. Here, what are you staring at? <laughs> Sorry, just making sure you're real. Cheek, don't you start that up again. You ain't half rum. Rummy scale are no. Except Dory, of course. Good. We're both real. And her. Sarah. And pigs can fly and the moon's made of green cheese and I'll be six foot high yet. Or my name ain't Teddy Larkin. <coughs> what did you say? <coughs> what did you say your name was? Teddy Larkin, of course. But you said it was Tom. Tom short for Edward. You said. That's right. Same as yours is. Minty short for Penelope. But that was a joke. I thought you were joking. Look, I'm Teddy Larkin, right? But kitchen boys here is always called Tom, see? What? You mean all kitchen boys? That's right. Gotta be. Someone yells Tom and it means kitchen boys. And we all come running, see? Can't expect old Cramp and the knobs to go learning all our names off. But you don't mind? You get used to it. There's three of us here, all Toms. Oh, what's her name? You get called that and all. What's her name? I think I'll have to go on calling you Tom, because that's who you are now, to me. Do you mind? Of course not. But to me, you're a proper Tom, not just a kitchen one. <coughs> Tonight, <coughs> we'll meet by the moon dial. <coughs> Midnight. <coughs> Will you do it? <coughs> Don't always work, though, do it? But it's working better all the time. Haven't you noticed? It's as if, if you really need it to, it will. <coughs> like just now. I come looking for you. Not to tell about Dory. You needed me, like I needed you that first time we met. And Sarah, she needs us both. Midnight then, on the stroke. <coughs> well, near enough anyway. Aren't there any clocks where you are? Clocks all right. Great ticking things and bing bang bong, morning, noon and night. But you can't tell the time. Now when it's time to get up, don't I? Now when it's time to kip. And barely tell me when it's time for dinner. Look, see this. An arm clock? A watch. You put it on. There. An arm clock? An arm clock? Hey, I've got an arm clock. Now, I'll show you what to do. When the big finger's at the bottom, here, and the little finger, there, right at the top, it's time to set out. There and there. That's it. Best put it in my pocket. If old Mark Crump sees it, she'll have it off me in my backside black and blue. We don't know it'll work. Us both being there at the same time. Sarah's time. Not for sure. No, we don't. Yeah. Horrible looking object. I hate that. Yeah. Oh, you shouldn't have. Tom? But he too had vanished, as if he had thrown the stone into time itself and set up widening rings that had drawn him into them, like a whirlpool. You shouldn't have done that. The raven. Wild! Uh, oh, <laughs> you, is it? I just paid my respects, tidying up a little. Look as if you've seen a ghost. Uh, I've got something for you. Got them names for you. The sundial. Wrote them down. Bit out of the common, see? Uh, Kronos and Eros. Greek, they are. Oh, thank you, Wild. Those their proper names, but they've got meaning in English. Meanings? Kronos, that's time. Time. And Eros, that's love. Love, of course. Lots of things are greater than fear. Love, for a start. Light and shade by turns, but always love. I shall take the key with me. That'll be the safest thing. Oh, there you are, Minty. Miss Raven's going on a ghost hunt tonight. And I shall wear my special outfit. I'll fetch it for you to see. She really is rather strange. Can she really see ghosts, do you think? I shouldn't be surprised. I think she's a witch. Oh, Minty. That cat. It must have told her. 
Why else is she going out tonight? There! What do you think? She is a witch. Well? Oh, very nice. It has a hood, too. There! The perfect disguise. Shouldn't it be white? White? For a ghost, aren't they usually supposed to be white? I'm not trying to look like a ghost, silly girl. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought you were. Think. I am anonymous. I might be from any age in such a costume. Ghosts are sensitive, you see, and easily frightened. If one were to appear and see me, then it would simply assume that I am from its own time. Now, do you see? Should be a moving shadow. Invisible. Oh, what a sensible idea, Miss Raven. Mm -hmm. The steward was very helpful about my going into the house. I shall be free to go wherever I please. Make sure you don't look in a mirror. What? What did you say? Just something I heard. That if you see a ghost in a mirror, then the devil gets you. Minty. I never heard of such a thing. Whatever made you say such a thing? It just came out. Frightening her like that. She did seem rather frightened, didn't she? Oh, I'll be glad when she's gone. Me too. When will she go? Oh, at any time. She said she never stayed anywhere long. She said... Now, what was it? Oh, yes. She came and went as the spirit moved her. And it's going to be tonight, Mum. I don't know what's going to happen. The raven... Oh, she'll be there in her long black cloak. I shall wear that ghastly long nighty, and my duffel. And mum, I've got a secret weapon. No, not a weapon. A talisman. It was just lying there, with that old-fashioned set on the drawers. A mirror. A hand mirror. Where's the raven? Miss Raven, I mean. She just popped over to the house. She wanted to hand something in to lost property. Oh? A watch, she said. Found it in the graveyard. Oh, no. An arc An arc Hey, I've got an arc Oh, poor Tom. Why, Minty, you're crying. What is it, dear? He might not come. I could be there alone. Oh, I daren't, Mum. I daren't. But it's got to be tonight, Mum. I know it in my bones. The minute I clapped eyes on you, I knew. That's her, I thought. That's the one to turn the key, to set them free. Those children locked up and crying and begging to be set free. And, Mum, I think I'm going to a dangerous place tonight. N not even sure I shall come back. I might even step out of time for good. Run forever in moon time. And never grow up. Stay a child forever and ever. A story! <coughs> The moon dial. What if it doesn't work? Eros. That's love. Light and shadow by turns, but always love. Lots of things are stronger than fear. Love, for a start. <sighs> yes, I'm coming, Tom. I'm coming, Sarah. I'm coming, Dory. I've got the key. There she goes going towards the house. Now it was her turn. Once the tall black shape had glided swiftly out of sight, she tiptoed down and climbed through the casement window she had earmarked earlier. Here and there she glimpsed a silvered eye. The cats did not turn a hair at her presence. Each was locked in a private world, intent on his own secret. She saw that the distances of the park were bathed in a curiously soft, milky light, insubstantial as a dream. And as she drew near the moon dial, she saw, standing by it, a solitary dark figure. Oh no! She's there! 
And then she saw that it was not the raven, but, incredibly and miraculously, Tom. He was there, waiting for her, had kept his promise, no matter what. Minty! You came. The watch. Lost it, didn't I? But I ain't daft. It's easy. Fingers in a line on an arm clock. Fingers in a line on an ass clock. You came and all. You didn't know I would? Never tell, not with a girl. <laughs> oh, you. Now what do we do? I don't know. The moon doll? Yes. It's the little one, you said. Yes, I know who he is now. A bit sissy, all them curls. He'll never be a footman. But it's him that'll help us. Come on. For the last time. Light and shadow by turns, but always love. Then she was reeling in a long green corridor of time. Her ears filled with the old whispers and voices, and that strong wind blew clean and cold. She was drinking it in, and it tasted white in her mouth. She was drinking it in like a fish. She was swimming in it like a fish. When the wind dropped and the voices faded, she knew that they were in a different season, under a different moon. It's cold. Look! Sarah! Yeah. Where's she going? She's going to that pond. One more time I'll try. The magic night of all the year. Halloween. <gasps> Halloween? So intent were they that they did not notice the first strange shape steal from the shadows, forming a ring, closing in on that solitary little figure by the pool. Now, let it work. The moon could be more magic than the sun. Look! Now the two watchers saw that host of other shapes. The figures, real or unreal, were those of children. They had no faces. Each wore a mask, grotesque and horrible, with cavernous sockets instead of eyes. Some had horns. Then, one by one, weird orange glows emerged from the folds of the cloaks, round and luminous, disembodied heads, no, we mustn't run. and you will not be harmed. Soon the clock will strike midnight. Midnight on Halloween. Go back to the pool and drop your lanterns in the water. As the clock strikes, shut your eyes. If you open them before the last stroke, the devil will get you. Quick, before it's too late. Under here, quick, down. Trick, they've gone. Find them. They've tricked us. Pesty devils, I'm off. You reckon the devils have got them? What if he gets us? Come on, yes. Scarpa. Beat it. Run, devils after us. Come on, Sarah. They've gone. Now we're going home. Holding Sarah's hand, Minty began to walk towards the moon dial and journey's end. She could see it ahead, feel it pulling her like a magnet. Sarah, you can put your hood down now. Safe as ass is, honest. I don't. I don't want to harm you. You're my friends. Please, Sarah, please. Then slowly, very slowly, a hand came up and pulled the hood away. Sarah, her stained face clear in the moonlight, looked wonderingly first at one, then the other. Then, quite deliberately, Minty leaned towards her and kissed her, full on the marked cheek. She withdrew. Sarah was staring up at her in disbelief. Now at last, Minty drew out her talisman. It shone broadly, catching the moonlight. A mirror! Sarah! Sarah, open it! 
Open your eyes. Sarah, look. Come all this way I have to fetch her. Uh, I want you to be my sweetheart. Will you? Sarah, you must trust us. Please. I'm holding the mirror. I want you to look into it. Don't be afraid. I daren't. I daren't. Here, I'll hold your hand. Trust me, Sarah. You must. That's me. That's you, Sarah. The hand moved from mirror to face, then back again. She fingered her hair, pale as corn, and touched her eyes, lips, cheeks. She was alone with herself for the first time in her life, the others forgotten. I'm beautiful. Oh, you are. You are. And the mirror. It didn't crack. Of course it didn't. Sarah! Sarah! Oh, I must... No, not this time. Oh, I must go. No, come with me, Sarah. Come along with me, won't you? Sarah, here, this instant, devil's child that you are. Minty stepped forward, shielding the others. Just as Miss Vole reached them, that wild white face barely inches away, Minty lifted the mirror and held it full in her path. Where the devil? Where the evil eye? <laughs> Afterwards, Minty remembered only dimly what happened, as if it had been a dream. She remembered a shriveled black heap on the ground where the woman had stood, and a great black and silver wind rushing through the garden, stirring it into life. The very stone of the statue seemed to turn to flesh, to ease and breathe. At the far end of the walk, a dove was released into the air. She saw Tom and Sarah hand in hand, running away and already in a mist. They turned their heads and smiled and waved. For an instant, she was jealous, tempted to go after them, run free forever in moon time, always a child in a world without change. Then her eye fell on the moon dial, and she felt its pull, powerfully drawing her back. Dory! We saw Dory! Another child was running out of the milky mists, a tiny figure. And then the three figures met and embraced and were running on again, on and on, and out of sight. It's done. She didn't vanish into thin air, did she? Of course not. She took Mr. Jones's taxi to the station. She didn't have a big ginger cat on her shoulder. Oh, Minty, the things you come out with. I must say you look quite different this morning. It must have been that nice long sleep. You look quite washed clean. <laughs> That's what my mother used to say. Hello. I wonder what she'll say when she finds that mirror cracked. And it is cracked. It wasn't a dream. That was the hospital. It's your mother, oh, Minty. She's asking for you. Set free, like Tom and Sarah. Well, then, I was right. You did have the key. Yes, it's done. They're free. Well done, then. And my mother, oh, world, she's awake. She's asking for me. <laughs> and why wouldn't she be? Oh, I'm glad. I am glad. So the work's done. I'm just going to the garden again. Tie up loose ends? Yes. You bring that mother of yours here to see me when she's on her feet again. I've got a thing or two to tell her about you. <laughs> but I expect she already knows she's got a good one. When Minty had first entered the garden, she had been instantly aware that it was waiting for her, expectant, thronging with secrets. Now it lay perfectly calm and rinsed. It was no longer calling to her. She lifted her eyes and saw that the stone dove that had been released to fly through the dark air only hours before was again frozen in motion on that uplifted arm. She raised her own arm to it in salute as she passed. Then to the moon dial itself, whose power had worked miracles. 
Those two impressive winged figures stood locked in their struggle as though they would stand through eternity. She touched the head of the boy, though she expected no response, because there was no need. Thank you. Then on to the churchyard where it had all begun. She went to the corner by the tower and found that the tiny icy tongues were still there and for what seemed like the thousandth time tilted her head back to see those gilt pennants stock still in the windless air. It's a mystery. There was one last leap to be made into the dark. The first mystery was the last. She wheeled about, sensing that the answer was a fingertip away. Her eye fell again on that tiny thumbnail headstone with its stark inscription, E.L. 1871. And pigs can fly, and they're most made of green cheese. And I'll be six foot high yet, or my name ain't Teddy Larkin. Of course. Teddy. Edward. Edward Larkin. Full circle. In Moondial by Helen Cresswell, Minty was played by Julia Hicks, Tom by Joe O'Brien, and Sarah by Laura Popplewell. Kate was played by Janice Aqua, Miss Vole and Miss Raven by Rachel Atkins, Mary by Elizabeth Kelly, and Mr. World by Trevor Peacock. Max was played by Philip Joseph, John by Kenny Blythe, Mrs. Crump by Anne Beach, The Nurse by Claire Corbett, and The Doctor by Jonathan Keeble. The children were played by Jessica Peacock, Liberty Pollock, Max Hope Stone Bell, and Imelda and Isadora Dooley Hunter. The narrator was John Rowe. The music for Moondial was composed and realized by Neil Brand. Technical presentation was by Peter Ringrose, Paul Arnold, Ros Mason, and Rebecca Kirby. The director was David Hunter. <laughs>